Portugal is not going to let its traditional melancholy music fadu set the tone for its European Union presidency as it takes over from Germany for the second half of this year. Yet it does intend to commit the same energy and sincerity as fadu. With the European draft constitution not expected to survive in its present form, the so-called Lisbon strategy not yet quite out of the box, and new political voices in France and Britain, the institutional floorboards are creaking under the holy U. Yet Portugal's socialist prime minister is confident the 27 leaders are finally ready to stop strolling off on their own and unite in ode to joy. We don't have time to keep pretending that we don't have a problem. There are different views on how to solve the treaty, but we all agree it's urgent to find a solution and come to an agreement that will allow Europe to move on. And this is shared by Sarkozy, by Gordon Brown, by the Polish leaders and by everyone else. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has been negotiating a compromise text in secrecy, aiming to have a new treaty in time for the European elections in 2009. It has to weave together various wishes, including the British and Dutch will to drop the word constitution and the French desire to keep it short. Under its presidency, Portugal will inaugurate a new intergovernmental conference to finish up the text. But Lisbon has warned that its duration will largely depend on Germany wringing out a compromise at this June's European Council summit. The leader of the socialist group in the European Parliament agrees. Who, better than Germany, can solve the problems with this government, with this strong backing and the political families? Therefore, if the Germans can't solve the problems, I can understand the Prime Minister of Portugal very well when he argues uh, the Germans must uh, solve the main problems. I cannot take over the deficits of such an important uh, presidency than the German one. There's a widespread worry that neither Portugal nor Slovenia, which handles the EU presidency after it, has the political weight to get the treaty finished. A political analyst in Brussels points out that a lot is riding on prestige. The Portuguese uh, presidency priority, therefore, is to try and make progress on that. But all the signs, frankly, are that the French presidency, which comes a year later, as you know, the second half of 2008, wants to take the credit for coming to a conclusion on this uh, constitutional treaty. Partly to uphold the honor of its namesake, another of the Portuguese presidency's priorities will be to inject new life into the Lisbon strategy for growth and employment. Adopted by all the bloc's leaders when Portugal last held the presidency of the EU in 2000, this strategy was aimed at rendering Europe the world's most competitive knowledge-based economy by 2010. The strategy's national coordinator in Portugal, with the product development firm Ydreams, insists the key isn't in what or how much you know, but in thinking in new ways. The new Lisbon strategy differs from the old one substantially. Knowledge at the heart of the strategy isn't enough. Innovation is what's fundamental. Other countries are competitors such as the US, Canada, Brazil, India or China. They're also applying the Lisbon strategy and sometimes faster and with more determination than we are. In effect, this says failure is not an option. If the Portuguese presidency can achieve to convince members uh, of the European Council of Heads of States and Government to stick to what they promise in reality in their capitals at home, then we will have a success. The Portuguese presidency is also determined to achieve an ambitious international program that will start with Brazil, followed by meetings with Russia, India and China, and ending with Africa. Any EU Africa summit has been repeatedly put off in view of human rights violations in Zimbabwe and the EU sanctions against the Mugabe regime. While diplomatic efforts continue to overcome this by way of the African Union, the UK insists Europe must stand firm facing Mugabe, but Portugal seems determined to end the standoff. It's obvious there will always be problems, but nothing overrides the need and the urgency to resume talks with Africa.
Rights organization Amnesty International questions this. Portugal will have to think very carefully what price it wants to pay for having a summit if that price is that um, principles and, 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 and common policies that the EU has developed to address very serious problems in, in, in Africa are cut through that, that, that a, a strong collective uh, political uh, positioning by the European Union is, is undermined, then the question is whether, whether that summit would be worth it. Controlling immigration and the Union's external borders and extending the Schengen Open Borders area to nine additional countries are other priorities for Portugal. José Socrach says developments here look promising. It was Portugal that proposed the new technological solution which was approved by the Commission that will allow nine new countries to lift their barriers as of the 31st of December this year. The author of several reports on the new Schengen information system in the European Parliament, however, cautions there is still some work to be done. The new computer system doesn't grant these countries automatic access to Schengen. There are other criteria related to police efficiency and border control in which these countries must prove they're capable before they can be accepted in the Schengen area. In the run-up to Germany handing on the political baton to Portugal, citizens of Lisbon were looking forward to it. It's very positive for the Portuguese. I hope it will bring more tourists to Lisbon because the presidency is a symbol for a country and it's essential for our progress. In the grounds of Expo 98, the cranes are at work preparing the pavilions to host a summit in the autumn, but others contributing to the country's role at the head of the EU Council have far less time. Before the 1st of July, the presidency logo has to go on thousands of panels and pencils and websites galore. The chief designer presents his concept. Each petal symbolizes a member state with its own characteristics, merging with the rest of the petals, which are the other member states. In the context of European construction, this represents a spirit of diversity and the sum of all the values and characteristics of each member state. This is the spirit Portugal wants to convey during its six-month presidency. Europe as a group of countries with common interests and shared visions, in which each European can be proud of his or her individuality and bright prospects.